reading and studying. It ain't just reading, studying the Word, trying to apply it to your day to day life. Uh huh. But you got to act. The Word is dead unless it's made alive by your actions. So if you're not. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verse 15. Amen. The Lord is with us always. Amen. And in us is great treasures. And when you say treasures, the first thing people think of is material things, or what I get, or what I have, but it is not none of that. And the treasures ain't even in you if you're not in the Lord, because the tre I mean, I don't mean because you confess the Lord. I'm talking about being in the Lord Jesus, living, breathing Him. Then the treasures are in you, and treasures come out of you for other people as well as yourself. Amen. And the fourth verse, real quickly, he says, first chapter of Second Corinthians says, Therefore, since th through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secrets and shameful ways, and we do not use deception, nor do we distort the Word of God. On the contrary, amen, we're setting forth the truth plainly, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. In other words, living as though man can see what you really are in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And I'll be skipping a lot, so you need to go back and read all these chapters because my time will not permit. Then he says, the sixth verse, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made his light to shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. What is he saying there? God sh uh, shined his spirit. He shined his presence on us, brought us out of the darkness in the world, also had that light to shine, dividing the darkness out, shining in our hearts, that we might know not our knowledge or God would fit into what we want, but that we would know that glory, that glorious knowledge of God, and we will never know it in the fullness. Mm -mm, we won't. But we are to go after that knowledge because that will help us stand and grow and be what God wants. And he wants to see that shining soul in us that he sees his glory when he looks at us, reflecting back off. That's like if you're standing in front of a mirror. And if you're in front of, front of that mirror, well, what do you see? You see yourself looking back at you. That's your reflection. Well, when Jesus looks at you, the reflection that he wants to see is his glory coming off of you. Amen. Now, we ain't talking about how he's going to look if you're so good looking or ugly or wrinkled or all that. He's just looking to see if he can see his glory coming off of you. Amen? Amen? Yes. But we have this treasures our treasure in jars of clay, and we the clay, to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not us. Amen? Amen? We got that power in us, and God is showing us that we can do things through the, His surpassing power that is within us. God, and it is from God and not from us. From us. Sometimes people think they have the power. They forget they don't own the power. Amen. They don't have the power. And they can't even operate it unless they're in the Lord enough because the Lord operates it. We've got this so twisted up. Oh, my goodness. We are hard-pressed on every side. Now, I can really identify with these next verses. I hope you can. And I'm glad I can identify with them. Somebody said, really? Yes. For being able to identify with these helps make that glory of God shine from me when he looks upon me. Amen. It ain't funny. I didn't say it was fun. Somebody said, this ain't no fun. <laughs> well, no, I agree with you. 
why are you in the midst of anything? But when the glory comes and the answer comes and the victory comes at what God's promised you, that is more, yes. more than all you ever went through or ever could go through. Amen? Amen. He says, we are pressed on every side, but not crushed. Whoa. Perfected, but not in despair. Mm, but you feel that way. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Anybody been persecuted enough that you felt like, mm, God, did you abandon me in this? You do know where I'm still at. And you do know what I'm still going through. Mm. And what everybody's doing to me. I know y'all tell him that. Oh, yeah. God, they done that to me, and I'm already going through this. And the Lord thinks you ought to say, Ooh, God must think I am something in him because he's down all this at one time. Yeah, he, he, he knows what you're going to do, and he knows his strength in you. What that strength, if you're going to dig down in it, or if you're going to run from it, or if you're going to make up your mind to stand. And let me tell you, beloved, God is not in the making business. He ain't going to make us do none of that. No. I like to say this so he can make us wish we had her. But he, I don't do that. God gives us free will. And he says, now, I want you to become this. I want you to show out my glory. Not your flesh. I don't want to see you. Have you ever really thought somebody come and you so wore out of being around them and you so tired and, and it might not have been the right attitude, well, it really wasn't, but you'd think to yourself, I just wish they wouldn't come see me. Go on home. Leave me alone. I've seen enough of your face. <laughs> well, I, I, whether you believe this or not, I think the Lord, and y'all can act like you want to. But I don't think God's always so happy, happy with us. And I know he's not. And I also don't think he's always so pleased when you're trying to be so pleasing. And sometimes people try to be so pleasing because they think they're going to fool the Lord or they're going to get God to do something they want. God don't fit into our category. He does not do it in that reason. He does it because it's in his plan and because he just loves us and has mercy on us. That's the truth now, most all the time. We're persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. We are always carrying about and around in our bodies the death of Christ. Always, always, that word says always we are carrying the death of God's body, Jesus Christ, in our lives. Mm -hmm. Jesus may also be revealed in our bodies that people can see it, that he is really in us, really in us. Can you imagine? No, you can't imagine. But Abraham tested to the end. God wanted to say, will my glory come through Abraham? I know it will, but Abraham don't know it will. Oh, we think we will stand the test. We think we got such faith, and we better have. But even in the midst of the testing, God is merciful, and when we call on him, he knows how much strength we got. He knows that we were under the load of cure, as we say, and can't seem to cure it. That's why he said, my yoke is easy and my burdens light. I will help you carry that. I will bring you through that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, moving right along. He says, so the life, we always are going around in our bodies, the death of Christ, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our bodies. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake. I don't care if you breathing, you going through something to get even closer to Jesus. When that's over, don't get too big-headed in a hurry because you're going to go through something else. Grab your breath, hold on to God just as hard as you did when you was in the valley and get, get ready. Get ready because it's coming again. 
Yeah, different things. Might know about this same thing, but it's coming again. He says, so that the death at, is at work in us, but life is at work in you. It is written, I believed, past tense, therefore I have spoken. And with that same spirit of faith, we also believe, therefore we speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. Listen, this is for the next, that calling, things that are not as though they were came from. From Jesus. He spoke it all into existence. Amen. Amen. And we, if we believe, must do the same. He said, I believe, therefore, spoken. Same spirit of faith acting in us. Same spirit. Therefore, 16 verses, therefore, do not lose heart. Do not lose heart. Though outward we are pa wasting away, yet inward we are being renewed day by day. For our light momentarily troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. The trials we go through here and this life, and they will be some horrible ones. They are sometimes, lighter ones at times, but they are such nothing to what it achieves in us and through us and for that great day when God will take us home. Amen. Amen. So he says, so we fix our eyes on what is seen, but not on what is unseen. Yes. For what is seen is temporarily. Mm, it ain't gonna be here after a while. Amen. But what is unseen is eternal. So, you know, you've went through things. You might have had to shake your head. You might have had to shut your eyes. You might have had to cry. You might have had to run. But you meant you was gonna shake that, that, that the devil was shaking under your nose or what you were seeing in the natural room, and you was going to get that out of your head and begin to call that thing as though it wasn't even there and what you believed it was. And, you, and it didn't say just believe it. It said speak it out, call it out. Yeah, I'm a firm believer of that. Yes. Well, you can't just do that and not pray. And I, you, A lot of people do name it and claim it. That won't buy you a thing, honey, because you quote that. But if you are really believing the Lord, and you have prayed and you believe that God said and you found the answer to your problem in here and you can. Then you begin to call that done. You begin to say it's done because Jesus said it's done. God had it planned. He knew. But he wants me to know. The problem ain't with Jesus. It's with y'all. And I'm a, if I could, I may eye contact with everybody that, but I can't. Because you're too busy. Looking on the inside, you're too busy for God to hide his treasures in you because you hide and every junk you can find in you. You don't get along with your brothers and sisters in the Lord. You grow and complain about them. Yeah, you know, they didn't do right. Well, honey, look under your big fat nose because you ain't doing right either. That didn't cost a dime. And somebody said, oh, Lord, it's going to be one of them sermons. No, it's not. But I'm telling you, do you acknowledge that your flesh uses your worst enemy and bring that flesh under subjection to the Lord and do something about what God has said? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to clip this in there. You can go ahead and turn because I'm going somewhere else with this. Mm -hmm. Yes, turn with me to uh, Galatians, the second chapter. The 13th verse. But before I get back to that, listen. The earthly things, the treasures that God has put within anybody, anybody that believes in him, if they cultivate them and move towards them, they can help bring them into existence. When people talk about Bethel, this house, this building, be in Bethel, a, a church, a house of God, it is. It didn't float down from heaven and come here. No, it did not. 
Much, much preparation went into that. How, well, you said, what you talking about, Pastor G? I'm telling you, much prayer, much fasting. Mm -hmm. I ought to know I was the one doing it. I was doing the fasting, I was doing the bread, and I was doing the believing at that time. Amen. But dare I take any glory? Let me say this. Inside this old flesh of clay, there was a treasure that God wanted to bring out. And it's been a treasure ever since. And you keep pulling out of that treasure every day. Every day. Somebody else comes in and they pull out of that treasure. What that was, Jesus wanted this to come into existence. Right where it's at. Just like he did it. Amen. That fasting, that praying. But I, I couldn't just fast and pray and not do nothing. If you are a person that's in God, are you trying to get in God deeper? And all you're doing, you may not like this, thankful you're doing this much if you're even doing this. Reading and studying, ain't just reading, studying the Word, trying to apply it to your day-to-day -day life. Uh-huh. But you got to act. The word is dead unless it's made alive by your actions. So if you're not having any actions, you're not going to get anywhere. I can stand here and say, but I move my mouth, but y'all don't know what I said because no sound came out of it. I did that deliberately. That's the same way of not acting. Well, if it happens, it happens. I'm so sick of that. Well, it ain't going to just happen. You want it bad enough, you're going to do something to cause it to happen through the presence of the Lord. Then after the preparations of prayer, fasting, and getting divine directions from the Lord, which I had to have divine directions to do what the next steps of it. Then got divine directions. God opened the door. What no resources I didn't have none. But God has all resources. He's an all miracle God. And when you will not listen to people, God's got a way to get you to listen. And it won't be easy. And some people don't like this part of preaching. Let me go on down the road and hear somebody tell me something good. Mm -hmm. Honey, I'm telling you something. What you, this is good for you, and you better listen. If you don't yield to it and change your ways and do what God is saying, you don't get nowhere. It's like, boom. But God, as the instruction, and I, I'm not saying I was perfect, but I cared about best I could. Then the resources. God showed me how he's going to provide the resources. Yeah. And when God provided that resources through one person, the check, to pay this church off. And that this was where he wanted. I didn't choose Chisholm. I, I lived in Chisholm way years and years. As a matter of fact, I was living in Chisholm then. But that ain't why I chose this building. There were several other churches. But this is what the Lord said. I'm going to put you where the light will shine the greatest. Amen. God don't take and run to the most elaborate place that you think you're going to go. And have you ever walked in a restaurant and it'd be so up class and so nice and you'd hope somebody come in and sing you there. Cause, ooh. But when you sat down to eat, you could have thrown up. No flavor, no taste. And you thought, if I'd have found me a little place out in the hole, hole in the wall, I might have got some good food. But this ain't, but some people, what they think is good food, I just think it's rough. But I am picky about certain things. But the thing is about it, we have to hear God to let those treasures come out. 
And God fixed that. Where we could come here, he knew what all the years he had it all planned out. Before we got here, when we got here, and what would go on afterwards still going on. Treasures untold treasures. Mm, has he brought. And I have been a part of it, and I am so thankful to him for that. I mean, I'm thankful. Did it cost? Yes, and it will cost you some. But the good thing I got to know and do know when I'm going through something is what he said he did to my enemy. And I'm about to read it to you. And my enemy is the devil of hell, the force of all hell, all of it. Mm. He said, when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us our sins, having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us. He took it away and nailed it to the cross. Hallelujah. And having disarmed the powers and the authorities, he made a public spectacle of them. Triumphed them over them by the cross. Now, breaking this down, he came, gave his life, nailed the things of the devil down. When they nailed him to that cross, he, it wasn't just to the world. It was they was nailing his body to that cross. Yes, that was real. But he could have called on angels and, they'd, and got, his father had sent angels. He wouldn't have had to stay there. But I like to think it like this. When they nailed him to the cross, he was nailing down the devil. He was placing him in a place that he, and stripping him of his power, stripping him, stripping him. And what did he do with that power? Jesus didn't keep that power. Oh, he's power. He is, what I say, omnipotent, almighty, sovereign. Some people don't even know what sovereign means. He's Lord God almighty. From beginning to end and all in between. He is the creator of all things. Holding everything jointly right in place. He nailed the enemy down that power. And turned right around. And took that power. And gave it to his children. You have the power to destroy the enemy. You have the power to rise above where you at. You can be poor, poor, and ain't nothing wrong with that. I've been dirt, dirt poor. But God can raise you to where you can live. You can make a living. But he took care of me even in the midst of all that. Just like he does everybody else. And your pride may will make you gag if anybody knows anything about it. But let me tell you, Jesus knows where you're at, where you was at, where you at, and where he's yet to take you. And he is going to say to you, there'll come a day. You had ever two. You had every two to win for me and to serve me. You had my word, you had my spirit. I took the things of the enemy and gave them to you. But you didn't fight for me. You didn't even serve me. People are running to and fro. Have you ever seen such running to and fro? I don't mean riding up and down the highways either. They are running to and fro in their minds that they can't even hold a thought. Hardly. They don't have no patience, no compassion, no love, and it is all about them. Anything in life is all what they go going through. Whether it be little or big, it's really all about them. Well, it really ain't, but they've made it that way in their corner of the world. It's really all about Jesus. Do y'all believe that? 
And how we live, that's the reason old man can take his glory. They can try. That's the reason he said that clay, that jar of clay has hidden secrets in it, which you are the clay. You got the hidden secrets. Amen. That's the reason he says this to his people in First Peter, second chapter. First Peter, second chapter. He says, mm, and we need to learn how to do this. Therefore, get rid of Rid yourself of all envy, slander, every kind of um, unpure thing, and live like newborn babies, craving pure spiritual milk, so that it may well make you grow up in your salvation. And now that you have tasted that the Lord is good, as you come to him, the living stone, meaning Jesus, rejected by men, but chosen by God, Precious to him. You also, like a, you are like a living stone, are being built into a spiritual house. You're being built. You ain't built. He's building you. Amen. Amen. Into a spiritual house. To be a holy priesthood. Woo! Offering sacrificial or spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Anybody here ever got up and You've been going through so much and life's just that way and you just didn't feel like a whoopee doo day. And man, I feel like praising God today. Now, some of you hadn't and some of you didn't praise him, but that's when it's called a sacrificial praise. That you praise him for what he's already done and whether it's a good day or to you or a bad day, you just want to praise him for what he's already done. Amen. 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 Then he said to some, you know, he's the cornerstone. Order your copy of this message from Pastor Gene Gibbons. Visit our website at www.pathwaytolife.net or give us a call at 334-262-4569. Please give us the title of the sermon when ordering. If you want to glorify God, God wants to use you as treasures. He, you got treasures in you that's never been taken out that can be used for people. That's true. Thank you for watching Pathway to Life. If you're in the Montgomery Metro or River Region area, we invite you to join us at Bethel Pathway Church. Our service times are Sundays at 11 o'clock a.m. and 6 o'clock p.m. Visit our website at www.pathwaytolife.net. Come, you will be blessed.